Hello everyone, welcome again to this next tutorial. Uh, last time we did spend some time trying to set up a Zoom with OBS, capturing a Zoom meeting through OBS. Now the next part is to actually live stream this, uh, this capture, because the only thing we do right now is just capturing whatever is coming from Zoom. We don't actually live stream it anywhere. So this is what we're going to do now. We're not going to live stream to standard public platform like YouTube or, or whatever. We're going to uh, to live stream to uh, the SpotMe uh, live stream platform. So if I pull my uh, SpotMe workspace here, so I'm connected on a, on a test workspace that I'm using. If I go to the live stream menu here, I can create a new live stream that I'm going to call um, Zoom to OBS live stream. Okay, I'll indicate that it should work in 30 minutes, 20 minutes ish. Uh, saving everything, we want to have the claps who is watching Q&A and we use our own live stream solution. We don't uh, use a third party uh, URL whatsoever. All right, so my live stream is created. Um, I have access to the live stream interface. Now I need some credentials to put into uh, into OBS. So the thing, the simple thing I need to do is to simply click on Start Preview. It's going to take one or two minutes to give me some RTMPS uh, settings that I can then use on OBS. So if I go already on OBS and I open the settings here, um, if I go to stream, I can see I already have some 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 old uh, RTMPS settings entered. I could obviously switch to more standard uh, live stream destination like Twitch, YouTube, as I mentioned. But in our case, uh, we always use the custom one and we live stream to the RTMPS settings that are being provided by uh, by uh, backstage here. So it's always taking a little while. Once I get the credentials, I will be able to uh, configure them very easily on OBS directly. Uh, and that should uh, give me uh, give me directly a possibility to live stream uh, to backstage. So uh, just a note maybe here. So you have uh, for all the live stream you create, you can only have obviously one source, right? Uh, here, this is an old live stream that we had scheduled, and this is one that is already in preview. If I open that one, but there is no source uh, feeding in any signal, right? So it's just streaming a black screen at that stage. Uh, in our current case, uh, zoom to OBS live stream. There we go. I have the preview that is playing again, black screen because it doesn't have any source at that stage. But if I scroll down, it gives me an endpoint, RTMPS. I can click on it, hit copy it, copies it, and I just paste it here. And I do the same with the streaming key. Click to copy, and then I simply paste here. Click on OK. And then at that stage, uh, let me actually double check something. Just disabling. Yeah, we're good. Uh, at that stage, I can launch the start streaming simply clicking like this all right and we should see uh, obs telling us that it's currently live streaming per the information that we have here uh, we see it's uh, live streaming to the uh, relevant rate so at two uh, kilobytes per second kilobit per second sorry right so it seems to be working now uh, we want to make sure that it's working on the uh, receiving end obviously so we don't really see anything yet uh, likely because there is a 20, 30 seconds delay. So we need to wait a little while until we receive something. It has stopped buffering. Let me maybe just uh, go to the live stream list and access it again. Um, and there we go. All right, so I'm receiving my uh, whatever I'm actually streaming programming here on OBS. And now if I was to, for example, switch to uh, the speaker view, I would be able to fade this in and uh, within 30, uh, within 20 or 30 seconds, we will see it appear here. So if I look at the countdown here, probably like 30 seconds or something at, uh, at 57, 30, we should see uh, the switch happening. 
and I could enable the sound to make sure that the sound is working and I'm receiving the sound okay but it is at the end uh, as simple as that to configure uh, to configure OBS and there we go to configure OBS as uh, as a, as, a, as a live stream source uh, let's put me live stream now it's a preview I'm seeing it on the back end right if I would want to see that on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, public version that uses C uh, let's give it a try right now if I just make a quick a quick test if I go with my profile here and I simply uh, access the web app and if I I basically need to indicate where this live stream will be available right because at that stage it exists on backstage as a source but that's pretty much it um, so I could for example add it here at the, at the top menu uh, so if I go to design and home there we go and I add a quick link I add here a live stream and I add my zoom to OBS live stream there we go I can scroll down I can save there we are I should if I refresh I'll probably see it now appearing in the quick bar here saying that okay so that's my live stream link if I click right now what I'm going to see is a countdown so if you remember when I created my live stream if I go back here I did set up a start time uh, at 12:30. Uh, it's 12:13 right now, so there is uh, 16 minutes to go before uh, 16, 17 minutes to go before uh, before it's actually meant to be live. But I can force the live if I simply uh, if I simply click on go live. So I'm still capturing myself. Obviously, I can click go live here and within a couple of seconds normally I should uh, see uh, the live version uh, that we were seeing just before and there we go and then at that stage it means that uh, I am currently live um, I am currently live uh, for anybody who has access to the platform obviously with a 30 seconds delay compared to what we're seeing on zoom so if I say hi on zoom with my hands like that we see it directly on OBS, obviously, because this is this is an immediate uh, an immediate screen capture. But we are going to see my hands moving in about fifteen to twenty seconds at that stage. Um, and otherwise, that's it. Really, uh, you have access to the Q and A and everything. So it's it's very it's really really simple uh, to do that. Uh, if I want to, then close it rather than stopping the live stream first. I see my hands right now. Uh, stopping the live stream here uh, the one thing we do is that we go there and we end the stream first so that we have uh, a bit of a cleaner uh, what happened here there we go and now uh, that way we have a bit of a cleaner uh, of a cleaner ends because if I was to stop the live stream here it would simply uh, tell me uh, Tell me something else because of the timing before because we started before we should actually start it displays the, the countdown again but if the time of start is is before uh, it's going to tell you hey thank you for watching and that's it and at which stage I can actually stop my live stream here and, uh, and that's it all right that was a very quick overview on how we on how we run uh, on how we run OBS with spot me live stream I hope I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching and enjoy your next stream bye bye